Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the third part of my VR tutorial series. Here's what we're going to be making. In this video, we create a touchpad system similar to that of the balloons in the VR tutorial. Okay, so how do you do that? First, you need to touch the pad so you can know where your reference point is. Then you need to work out which half that's on, then which quarter. Then you need to work out which position that's in inside of that quarter. Basically, if the x position, which is equal to 0 0.7 at the moment, is bigger than the y position, which is 0 0.3, that means it's on the x uh, uh, corner pretty much, or the x side. In this situation, that is the right side because it's on the top right corner. But if it's on any other corner, then you basically just rotate it inside of the code so you can work it out from there. Okay, so now to apply that. Open up your controller script, and we're going to create an enum with all the possible outcomes. Public enum touch positions. Um, and then the outcomes are off, which is basically when you're not touching it. Up, down, left, and right. Next, we're going to create a function, which will return a touch position. Um, current touch position. And basically what we need to do is get the position. So if we do vector2 pos equals controller dot get axis valve dot vr dot evr button id dot touchpad. That basically just gets the position on the touchpad. Uh, basically, it goes from negative 1 on each axis to 1. Um, then what we do is we check if it's on uh, the top half or the bottom half, which we'll do by doing uh, bool is top equals pos.y is greater than 0, or greater than equal to 0, actually. And then we'll repeat that with the x-axis. Okay, so now we're going to use those booleans. And then do the side inside of it. Then we're going to check which side is bigger. If pos.x, uh, actually no, pos.y is uh, greater than pos dot x then uh, then return dot up because that means that it's higher than it is uh, to the side so that means it's on the up position and it is the top right corner so yeah you turn up and then otherwise as if pos dot x is less than oh wait, no pos dot y is less than pos dot x um, then return touch position dot right. That's the exact opposite, so it just returns the right side. Um, then we're going to repeat that on the left side of the top. So if pos dot y is greater than negative pos dot x, because that basically just makes it so that the left side is sort of shifted to the right so you get the normalized value. So you can check that. Uh, if it is, then you can return the uh, touch position dot up. Otherwise, return the touch position dot left. Now what you need to do is just copy this and then put it on the bottom. Um, so yeah, you just replace all the ups with downs, and then you just get the negative version of each of the position y's. Actually, now that I think about it, you don't need to have the if statements there. Um, the else ifs, they can just be else's. Okay, so I think that's that function done. Okay, so that works, but it won't return a value when your finger isn't on it. So it'll basically just say whatever the last position was. 
So now what you need to do is basically just do else if pos dot y is less than pos dot x. So basically, if it's equal, it won't do anything. I'll just repeat that. So basically, just doing the opposite of the line above. Okay, so after that, you basically just need to do return dot off. So it'll basically just check, and if it if at any point they are equal, which could be zero zero if you're not touching it, or if they just happen to align, then it will return off. Okay, so now open up your hand script, and we're going to create a switch statement instead of using that old print. So basically, um, if you don't know how to switch works, I'd suggest you look it up real quick just so you can know from now on. But yeah, um, it basically just does the exact same thing as before, except in a more structured format. So if I just copy that again and place it inside of the um, section where it checks if you are currently holding an object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that um, if you're pressing the right or left, it'll move the, uh, the item in your hand to the right or left. And the same with up and down, except that'll correspond to um, forward and backward. So right, um, held object dot transform dot local position plus equals vector3, uh, actually no, um, transform dot, actually yeah, def definitely vector3, vector3 dot right times time dot delta time. Um, so I'll copy that and do it in the left. And I'll do the same with the up and down, except um, vector3 dot forward. Copy that again and to minus equals. So give that a play. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In this video, we managed to split the touchpad up into four different buttons and it works fully functional. Um, the only thing I have to say is that the actual thing I turned it into is not overly useful, it's just a demonstration of what can be done. Uh, if you were going to actually do what I did, I'd recommend just using the values um, of the actual position to move it around rather than a rounded value like I did, but yeah, it works, so yeah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.